Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating the handle element of this uh, Dwarven Battle Axe. I'm going to split this video up into two components here. We're going to do just the handle in this video, and then in a subsequent video, we will be handling doing the blade. So the first thing that I want to do is I just want to go into my front view, start down at the bottom here, and start generating geometry as I work my way up. I will begin with a torus that I'm going to use to generate the shape of these rings down at the bottom. So I'm going to go and increase my radius here until this slightly matches a little bit better. I'm going to reduce some of my values here in order to get this to be a little bit closer to what I want. When that's done, I can convert this to an editable poly. I'm going to hold shift and make a clone above it. And ensuring that that is a clone, we're going to go and turn on our angle snaps, rotate this guy to be 90 degrees, and delete half of it. Now I'm going to drop these elements down. We're going to attach them as we go here. I'm going to drop these elements down as they should actually be coming out of the center of this ring here. So that's how we're going to start that. Uh, next, we'll start this next ring. So I'll start by generating a cylinder, rotating it 90 degrees, and then setting my parameters to match a little bit more closely what I would like this thing to look like. And then we're going to go and move this thing down. We'll convert this as well to an editable poly. We're going to go into move and we're going to go and drop this down until it matches. I do want to rotate this until it matches a little bit more closely. The, uh, the angle here that I would get if I had a face pointing towards me. I'm going to go and hop into x-ray mode we'll generate a stud to place in the center of this thing i'm going to go and reduce the size of this stud and convert it to an editable poly as well we are also going to remove the rear half of this thing now at this point i do want to start placing my geometry in a more centralized area so i'm going to ensure that I'm in zero and x and zero and y the z is going to change as that is the up and down here and so We'll just make sure that all the geo is at zero, zero. With that done, we can move the geometry from the stud out towards the surface here. This might be a little bit easier to accomplish in my top view, something of that nature. We will now go into rotate holding shift and Cancel. We're going to rotate this a total of, let's go and reset this. We're going to rotate this a total of 45 degrees. And so there, and whoop, I let go inappropriately. Let's go put it there. And I'm going to set this to have the right number of copies. We'll get out of x ray mode, and I'm going to clean my end gons as I go, making sure that they don't remain. So we can do that. And then we're going to go and attach these things together. So in my geometry here, attach. We'll go and grab all of these and set them up all the way around. I'm going to make this entire thing a single piece of geometry, um, which is going to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to go into my front mode here, and we'll grab my element. I'm going to hold Shift and Control and drag a copy up. I'm not sure that that's where, we're going to go, where that's going to end up going. Uh, we're going to go and create the faces here in the center first in order to set this up. So I'm just making sure that my geometry here kind of matches topologically what I've been doing everywhere else. And I'm going to go in and reduce my radius a little bit here. Move this up a little bit more here. I'm now matching the side of this thing. I'm going to pull the height out. Until it matches, I will convert this to an editable poly as well. That is going to allow me to get a little bit more modeling out of this. I'm going to grab this edge here. And we are going to chamfer it. This is going to give me a additional loop in here. And then I'll use that loop to create the bevel that sticks out. We'll do this by local normal. I'll bring this out. And I'm just going to reduce it a little bit in order to make it feel a little bit more round. We'll pull that down just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, cleaning end gons as we go. Again, we'll insert, inset this 
and we'll clean that one, which doesn't need to exist. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to now uh, create the other rings here. I'm going to be do the, doing this by applying a symmetry modifier. And so I will go and apply symmetry. We are going to edit the mirror of the symmetry. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees until it points straight down. And then we'll add another symmetry. And I can flip this one. That'll give me the other side here. I'll add another symmetry. We'll change the orientation of this. And we'll make sure that, again, we are editing the mirror. And we'll rotate this 45 degrees. I'm going to bring this one below the previous. And let's make sure. Let's delete this one here. Make sure that we're getting this done. <coughs> excuse me. In the right way. So there we go. We have three of them. And now I can just continue to add my symmetries the right way. So flip. And there's four. I'll do a symmetry in Y, and that's 5, and a symmetry in X will give me the other. Convert this to an editable poly. I'm going to go into my poly groups on this object now and start cleaning it. So first, I don't need the cap along the top or the cap along the bottom. And so I'm going to delete those, and then we are going to go and regroup our smoothing groups to clean this up. Like so, ensuring that we have hard edges where we are supposed to get them. I'm gonna also go in and re-smooth the bevels that live along the edge of these discs here. I'm gonna do that by first getting a larger selection than I want, clearing it, and then shrinking that selection back down to the face and changing it. Now, this object is good to go. I'm going to go to my front view here, and I want to ensure that on this object here, we have a certain level of penetration between these objects, which I do not want. I want to make sure that this is absolutely only penetrating through the other piece of geometry as minimally as possible. Uh, this is going to ensure that we're not wasting too much geometry inside of our shape. So there we go. That's going to create that piece, which I'm going to hold shift and clone up here. And we'll just make a couple of copies of this. The second of which is going to come back down. Again, I'm going to replace these here. Actually, this might be easier to do if we select the whole thing. So what I'm going to do here is attach this all together. Go to element mode and control shift to create a clone out. This is going to ensure that these polygons here have the same spacing and distance as the previous. So we'll put this here. I'll control shift clone another copy. And I want to get this to the point that it's just barely sitting inside that one, which I can go and then delete. Okay, next I'm going to be creating the handle. To do this, I'm going to create a cylinder that has the right diameter. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and drop it down. We're going to go into our modeling and I'm going to drop the number of sides down here in order to make my polygons a little bit bigger. And I'll increase the height until it covers the distance here. And then finally, we're going to go and create some edges along its height segment. So bringing this up until the polygons are pretty close to square. Something in that nature. Again, I'll convert this to an editable poly, and we can remove both caps, the top and the bottom, like so. I'm just going to delete those. The next thing I'm going to do is select all of my edges to store them in memory, select all my faces, and then I'm going to go and inset them. These are going to be inset by polygon. And then I will collapse them. Return to my edge selection and remove. And now we can go and start creating the rest of this shape. So I'm going to go and extrude this edge out and move it up along this area here. I'm going to go into my face selection and we're going to go and chamfer this to give it some curvature. We'll bring this up until it matches. I'll drop down into the bottom here, and there's a metal area here that I need to create. So I'm going to hold shift and drag this down like so. 
And then to, in order to make sure that we can see all of these little diamonds here as they exist, I am going to go and bevel them independently of one another using the by polygon mode. And all I'm going to do here is just make this a very tiny minor little amount. So we're going to go negative here and then we're going to go positive to push them out a little bit. So we get a look at what that braided effect looks like. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is clean up my smoothing groups on this object, which is going to be <clears throat> a little bit more complicated. I'm going to reduce down my auto smooth amount, and that's going to take care of the inner workings of this thing. And then I'm going to return that back to where it was, and I'm going to go and do the metal bands here. So we'll go all the way around and we'll grow this a couple of times, clear it and put a new number on and do the same thing down at the bottom. So that should have a nice curvy look to it. And down here at the bottom, we'll also clear and put another row of polygon smoothing in there. Okay, I still have a little bit of a gap here where these things are not matching up. So I'm going to scale this in and move it up. And we'll go to polygons here and I just wanna scale these up until they match. I'm going to also hit grow and put a smoothing group, shrink, and change my smoothing group to ensure that this new piece is uh, also taken care of smoothing group wise. And with that, I'm going to go and adjust my reference mesh here to match so that I get the blade the right shape and dimension. I'm going to start by placing this into the center here, and we can go and in polygon mode, element mode make a clone of this object, place it on the top, and now we can go and create the box. Since I need to create a circular round opening here, I'm actually gonna start with something circular and round. I'll use a cylinder, to generate that, or a tube rather, which is gonna generate that shape for me. In perspective, we'll go take a look at this guy. So it's got way too many edges around its height segments, which we're gonna go and remove. And then we can convert this to an editable poly and start modeling. I'm going to remove the back of it. And I'm going to remove the side of it. And then in my front view, I will grab my new border. And I'm going to go and scale it out. And I've got an edge that's flush here on the, on the side. Um, I'm going to go into vertex mode. And the idea now is to start aligning these things a little bit better. So we'll take these top vertices here and align them. We'll take these bottom vertices and align them. And then we'll align the right in X and the left in X to square this off. We can then go and start collapsing vertices together that needn't exist on their own. And we can actually go and target weld these over as well. Now this is going to be a symmetrical mesh. So I'm not gonna bother with the left side here any further. We're just gonna continue on with the right. I'll bring this up until it's, again, just barely inside that shape. Bring this down until it's barely inside that shape. And I'll go to my edges, and I will start modeling from here. So from here, we're going to go out and out and then back in. I'm going to take the entirety of the shape and move it forward. And I take these two faces and just drive them back a little bit further and drive this forward a little bit more. I'm making sure here when I do this that there's no overlap between these two shapes. With that done, I can throw on my symmetry here and I'm gonna symmetry in X and I'm gonna symmetry in Y. Uh, we don't need the Z on either symmetry. And the Y symmetry is gonna flip. Oh, let's, we're gonna to need to move the mirror from Y. back like that. And I can convert this to an editable poly and continue modeling. So I've got two edges here that have uh, need to be bridged. There's an open hole here. So I'm gonna do that and remove those edges. Uh, it appears to be the same thing all the way around. So I didn't get my geometry close enough that the mirror was able to um, weld these up. And so I'll just go manually weld these with my collapse shortcut. I'm gonna go into my uh, faces or my edges here and we'll remove the mirror to edges, which are no longer necessary either. 
We're going to make sure that this object is also centered in X and Y to make sure that it doesn't uh, fall off center anywhere. I'm going to go and create a sphere, which I'll place right in the middle here. This is going to be the gem that kind of sits in the middle of this thing. I'm going to do this in, uh, in this mode here so I can see this a little bit. If you're having trouble seeing this, I'll change my color to something that is a little bit more visible. And I will go and alter the number of segments on this thing until it matches that um, that hole that I've got. And I'm going to also make sure that it is centered in X, Y, and Z. Uh, this is going to have to move forward. I will grab my placement. We're going to go to Effect Pivot only, and I will move my pivot there. And now I should be able to pop this forward. And now we've got that sphere gem in the right place, centered in the middle. Um, because of the shape of this sphere gem as well, there are faces here that are not being used, which run along the center. And so I can delete those. And then I can actually take this sphere and move it forward until it bulges out. So let's say negative 13 is a good number, which means on the other side, it's going to move back 13. And there, we've got that little gem poking out the front. Now we'll go and return the color of this thing back to its original color. And that gives me now that. The only thing remaining is now going to be the pyramid that sits atop the entire handle. So we'll go and grab our image, move it up again. I will begin with a pyramid that I'm just going to make about the right dimensions. I'm going to rotate this until it's 90 degrees and 45 degrees and then we can go and center it in x and center it in y and we can drop it down until it's in about the right place here now in order to get this thing set up correctly i'm going to need to make sure that the width and height are um, in the right size and so that's too big that's not too bad i'm going to pull the height down here until it's in the right place and I might be able to go even lower and pull this up a little bit. <clears throat> okay, pleased with that, convert it to an editable poly. Grab the faces on the bottom. And I'll do this in this view here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be beveling without height and with a positive value to go out. I will continue to bevel and this time remove the offset and I'll push this down into the shape. Then I can delete it and attach the remainder of the object together. I'll start with the handle. We'll go to attach all and I'll select everything except for my reference plane, which I'll call handle. At that point, this object is good to go. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at creating the handle or the blade of this axe. So going in and creating all of the little fiddly detail, as well as adding the golden detail to some of these other little intricate pieces.